Welcome back to Small Ball and More. We're back in the garage with the blue 2022 monkey with a quick video of the new style Oxford heated grips, the Hot Grips Pro. Now, I've had the original style for about a year now and I've loved the function of them, but hated the look. That separate controller just looks like an afterthought and although it works perfectly fine, I think it spoils the look of the handlebars. But worry not, because Oxford products have addressed that with the latest heated grips range. Now I have an integrated controller in the left hand grip. So I'm going to whip the old ones off, swap them out for these new style ones. You still get the battery protection function that switches off once the voltage begins to drop, which should always leave you enough power to get the bike started, even if you leave them switched on by accident. There's another small change too. The new versions, they only have three heat settings, low, medium and high, opposed to the five settings from the old style ones. But in reality, that was overkill. And I only ever really put them on 100% to warm them up and then knock them down to a kind of medium setting. So I'm happy with three settings. And it's not that I really use the bike in winter, but with spring around the corner, it really does make it much more enjoyable when you're out for a ride and it's really fresh outside. So something to note as well, if you're new to the Oxford products, there's different models. So these are the Adventure and they're a little bit longer than the other models, which I think works really well, especially if you're installing them on a bike with hand guards. There's just a bit more room to get your hands in, particularly if you're wearing winter gloves. Obviously, that's not a problem with the monkey. Nevertheless, I do like the extra room. That said, let's get them unboxed and onto the bike. So, what do you get in the box? Instruction manual, grip glue, the fused harness that connects directly to the battery. And then there's the grips themselves. Open-ended for use with hand guards or bar end inserts. And each grip has waterproof connectors. The grips themselves feel very sturdy. Okay, let's grab a set of vernier calipers and measure the old style hot grips. So they're coming in at 33.6 millimeters. So how does that compare to the OEM grips? They're coming in at 32.4 millimeters. So that's only an increase of 1.2 millimeters in the diameter, which is hardly noticeable. The new versions are measuring the same size as the originals, so that's good. Let's get the old wiring harness off the bike. They're not the same connectors compared to the newer versions, so these need removed. Then unclip the wiring to the grips. In the instructions, it says that you must use grip glue. I didn't glue the old ones on, and they're really hard to remove. It could be the knurling on the pro taper bars, so make your own decision on grip glue. If your bars are smooth, it's probably a good idea to use it. As you can see, the new grips go on just as tight, if not slightly tighter than the previous ones. It definitely took some getting into place. Previously, on other bikes, I've used hairspray or compressed air, but figuring the old ones were nice and solid and didn't move, I reckon these will be just fine. But like I say, the instructions say you must use grip glue. Once in position, make sure the cable exit is pointing directly down. Slightly different on the throttle side, this bike's fitted with a quick action throttle tube and to be fair, they're about a tenner. So rather than fight on trying to remove the old grip from the tube, I'm going to remove the whole thing and insert a new grip on a new throttle tube. I'll put the link in the description to the throttle tube. Obviously, this involves disconnecting the cables from the throttle tube. If there's enough slack in the cable, then you might be able to get a pick in and disconnect them. I've had this throttle adjusted quite nicely so there's no slack, so I'm going to have to disconnect it from the throttle body itself. Because we have the DNA Stage 3 kit installed, we've got to remove the pipe 
that connects the throttle body to the plenum. With the throttle body cables disconnected, you can easily remove them from the throttle tube and slide the grip. Comparing the orientation so the exit wires point down, it's more important with the throttle side as when you twist the throttle, you don't want the exit wires interfering with the front brake lever. So make sure you give the throttle a good few turns to make sure the cable doesn't foul anything. Reconnect the cables to the throttle body and refit the switch gear. Then remove the old style controller. I'm glad to see this go. Now, I've got the multifunction button for the Takagawa dash on the back of this controller, so we'll remove that and relocate it. With the controller removed, it's already looking loads cleaner. Then put the throttle body cover back on, refit the airbox pipe, reconnect the map sensor and HT lead. So now we're just into tidying up and routing the wires. On the throttle side, it's really important to leave enough slack so the wire isn't tight when twisting the throttle. Also, check that nothing's pinched when the steering's on full lock. The waterproof connectors only go together one way and just screw together to make the waterproof fit. Onto the battery harness. Now I like to remove the fuse while I'm connecting everything. So first disconnect the battery negative. Connect the negative lead. Disconnect the battery positive and connect the positive lead. At this point, I'm just tucking the excess wire away. Route the cable up towards the bars, connect the harness. Again, there's only one way that can connect. Then, depending on your bike, start to tidy up the cables. I like to use fabric loom tape. And the odd cable tie. If your route wires along an existing route, just check they don't get pinched when you turn the handlebars. Now the instructions say not to route them with existing wires as it could cause interference. However, I've never had an issue. Once you're happy with the routing, take some cable ties and secure it back to the battery. Reinsert the fuse, seat back on, and you're good to go and test the grips. So here's a look at them on the bike. Nice clean installation. So operation, it's really straightforward. There's only one button. Just press and hold for three seconds to turn on. Press and hold again to turn off. Switching through the different heat levels is very straightforward. Press and hold to switch on automatically goes to full power, a red LED. Press again for medium power, a white LED, and then press again for low power, the blue LED. Once again, just cycle back by pressing to go back to full power. You'll also notice that after a while, the LED light dims, so it's less distracting on the bike. Finish with switching them off by holding the button in for three seconds. So, as mentioned before, there's a battery saver function. The grips auto switch off if the voltage starts to drop. However, there's three settings for this. One's for a standard lead acid AGM type battery, one for a lithium battery, and one switched off altogether. Although there is a warning in the instructions that says, obviously, 
If you choose to switch it off, leave the grips on, it will drain your battery. So, how do you change between these settings? First, you need to switch them on. Once on, hold the button in for about seven seconds. This will turn the grips off and flash the LED light a number of times to indicate what mode they're in. One flash for lead acid, three flashes for off, and five flashes for the lithium battery. Just cycle through these until you get the correct setting. I've got a lithium battery installed on this bike, so I'm looking for five flashes. If you see the LED light flashing rapidly after switching on, this means the voltage is lower than the battery saver setting and the grips will turn off. So that's the new Hot Grips Pro Adventure installed. I much prefer these without the standalone controller. They look so much better on the bike and yet they're a fraction thicker than the standard grips, but it's not something you really notice when you're holding them. Just like the last ones, they get toasty hot, which is a lovely creature comfort when you're out on the bike. So what's next for the bike? Well, we've got these lovely Brembo four pot calipers to go on the front. So subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, we're dynoing this bike later this month with and without the over exhaust and the DNA and of course we're going to film that so get subscribed but for now that's all from us at Small Bar and More catch you on the next one take care